Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Eisenstein, Eisenstein Effect! I'm your host, Vicki Eisenstein, and this is my guest... Matt Young! Matt is an improviser and an actor. You can find him around town here in Chicago at the I.O. Theater where he performs an improvised Shakespeare as well as an improvised Star Trek. So you can tell that he is a very learned man just from his credentials already. And also he's in a super popular podcast right now called What's the name of your podcast again? Hello from the Magic Tavern. I knew there was a Magic Tavern and then I forgot the beginning, but it makes <laughs> sense because they're saying hello, I guess. Yeah. How does that make sense? How does the title make sense? Yes. Please elucidate for me. Uh, well, the premise of the show mm -hmm. is that my friend Arnie mm -hmm. fell through a magical portal behind a Burger King mm -hmm. and now he's trapped. He plays himself. But he's trapped in the magical world of Foon, which is like Narnia or like a Lord of the Rings Middle Earth sort mm -hmm. of. Um, and he does a talk show, much mm -hmm. like this one, uh, but from this tavern in this magical world. So uh -huh. he's sending a podcast back to Earth and saying hello from the magic tavern. There you go. Do you think that they think that this is real? Well, that's sort of the, one of the things we're playing with a lot uh -huh. is uh, Tim Sniffen does our intros and outros. Mm -hmm. And every episode, he really emphasizes that the podcast is not real. <laughs> he does, okay. That there are actors playing these roles. <laughs> right. But then we're playing with the idea that it is real. You recently were doing some sort of convention with that. I saw you were dressed up in your wizard gear and everything, right? Well, yes. Yes. I, I uh, We've done a couple of live mm -hmm. shows. We did a live show at the Jangle Heart Circus here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And we also did one at, oh, I'm wearing the t-shirt, at XOXO in uh, Portland. Awesome. I did not plan that, <laughs> I swear. But yes, I was dressed as a wizard mm -hmm. uh, because on the show I play Usador the wizard. Mm -hmm. and my continuing role, I'm one of Arnie's uh, co-hosts. Mm -hmm. And Adler Fi plays the other co-host, mm -hmm. Chunt the Talking Badger, <laughs> who is a shapeshifter who uh, changes shape by uh -huh. having sex with different animals. That's the best way to change shape? Yeah, yeah, that's what he thought. Um, <laughs> And uh, my character essentially is like, if you've ever seen The Lord of the Rings, I'm essentially Gandalf who can't get anyone to go on a quest with him. I'm shitty Gandalf. Shitty <laughs> Gandalf. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's really, really fun. Um, I mean, you've, it's been super popular. People are really into it. Some people came to that conference to see us That's and like great. specifically just wanted to hear me say my name out loud because I have this ridiculously long name in the show yeah. that I say every opportunity I get. Is it like one of those blah blah blah, son of blah blah blah, like yeah. bequeather of blah blah blah? I yeah. love it! Yeah, I have a ton of titles and then we just keep adding to them mm -hmm. and like one of the things is that I have secret names that I will not I will not tell anyone for they're too powerful. My character on Magic Tavern now has his own Twitter account uh -huh. which is really fun to play a wizard who doesn't understand Twitter using Twitter. <laughs> Um, What's the name of the account? Uh, it? It's at Usador the Blue. So okay. U S I D O R E the Blue. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> that sounds amazing. It, it's really fun. Yeah. Like, uh, just all sorts of weird jokes from the show. And then there's like. So there's like all the jokes from the show, which you can kind of like rehash or play with people there. Mm -hmm. And they get a chance to like be involved. But then also like other weird things that are just for the Twitter. Like yeah. Usador doesn't really understand hashtags. So the only hashtag he ever uses is hashtag awesome. <laughs> and, and, and almost all of his tweets uh -huh. get cut off. Because he doesn't as get if the he, just, he doesn't get it and yeah. people keep telling him and he just ignores it. And like <laughs> I, I think I think my first tweet as Usador was, how do I? And that was the end of it. <laughs> Tell me about your birth. Uh it was uh, very early in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was very young. My mm -hmm. parents were very young when they had me. Uh, and it was, uh, I was born in Decatur, Illinois. Nice. I grew up downstate Illinois mm -hmm. and uh, spent 17 years there until I went to college. I started theater when I was in high school, there so, you, you know, that kind of led to this weird path that I'm on now. Yeah. Um, were you doing like musicals or just straight up plays or uh, both? Both. I, I was never a real strong singer though. Oh. Um, 
I actually got into theater because I was in choir, though. Mm -hmm. I was in choir in junior high, mm -hmm. and I was not that good. Oh. Uh, but then, uh, for some reason, my choir teacher asked me to audition for Sound of Music. Uh -huh. That was happening at the high school while I was still in eighth grade. I was not in high school yet. Nice. And I ended up playing one of the Von Trapp kids, the, el the oldest boy. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was so excited because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm meeting all these guys I'm going to go to high school with next year. Yeah. And I can't believe I got this part over all these other guys who are like better singers. And they shouldn't even ask those guys to audition. I was like, this is crazy. And then uh, once I got the part, she announced the class. She was like, oh, and Matt you know, is going to be in Sound of Music over at MacArthur High School uh, because they called asking us if we had any short boys. <laughs> I majored in theater in college down at Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville, mm -hmm. uh, my alma mater, uh, which is a very cool um, school right outside of St. Louis. Okay. So I grew up in Central Illinois. Yeah. I went to school in Southern Illinois. Yes. And then I thought, I haven't seen enough of the world. So I moved to Northern Illinois. Gosh, I moved so straight worldly. to Chicago. And so now, freaking worldly. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I spent a few years kind of uh, putzing around. I did some theater stuff, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I I did some children's theater. I worked with a theater company that adapted uh, children's books into theater. Oh, okay. And did that for a couple of years. What's that like doing children's theater? It's it's great. Mm -hmm. It's really exciting for a while. Mm -hmm. It's not something you can do forever. Like, it's great because they love it and they're just like so excited and mm -hmm. it's brand new to them a lot of times. Yeah. They've never seen anything like it. Like, they've seen TV and films and things, but like seeing a live person on stage like is just mind-blowing to a kid. Mm -hmm. And that they can like meet you afterwards, like... What? Yeah, it's yeah. like you seem like you feel like a star, you know, yeah. like in a way that you You are a celebrity for them. It's like yeah. I just saw you acting. What? Yeah. <laughs> uh and and it was cool cuz we were like in theory, you know, we were promoting these books too mm -hmm. and like hopefully getting them to read more. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like wishbone. Yeah. And then I that sort of like ended and I I I took a a trip to New York to visit a friend of mine cuz I was like, what am I doing? Am I moving to New York? Am I moving to LA? Mm -hmm. And there was a day where he had nothing to do, and I was like, well, I'll go down to where they shoot Conan and maybe see if I can get in. Even though they sell tickets a month in advance, maybe somebody won't show up. Mm -hmm. I'll wait in a line, whatever. I got there, they're like, there's no way, you're not getting in. Oh. So I putzed around for like an hour in the like gift shop there, just trying to kill time. Oh, Conan has a gift shop? What? Conan has oh, a gift shop? Oh, it's like the NBC, like 30 okay. Rock, Rockefeller Center. That would be shop. funny if he had a specific if he had his own. gift shop. Yeah. It's all just like stuffed <laughs> well, uh, characters of Conan stuff, with like yeah. huge red hair. No, but it was all NBC stuff and they were playing SNL reruns mm -hmm. in it. And I, and I've been trying so hard to do serious theater and in college I was told I needed to do serious theater yeah. and I needed to be an actor mm -hmm. and that anything that was frivolous or not or funny was stupid. Mm -hmm. And like, and I, I always was like, oh, I guess I'm, ugh. Again, I was like feeling like, it took me a long time to kind of like go, oh, these are the things I like doing. Yeah. Instead of what other people think I should be doing. Yeah, I understand that. There is like kind of that scholarly, like, you know, pretentiousness that like you do take on because you want to impress your peers and the instructors and 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 I learned amazing things mm -hmm. doing that. Like I, I'm not saying there was everything about my training that I had was was awesome. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not against them at all. And for some people, it's it's great. Like they want to do that gutsy theater, and I and I'm in this gift shop in New York watching Saturday Night Live reruns, trying to figure out what to do with my life. And I went, oh, comedy. I grew up watching Kids in the Hall and Monty Python and Saturday Night Live, Phil Hartman, Dana Carvey, that era, and I was yeah. like, oh, that's the thing I always loved. Like, I would record Kids in the Hall on Saturday night <laughs> when it was on HBO, watch it Sunday morning, have all my friends over Monday, make them watch it, and they'd be like, what, why is this funny? Be like, no, 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 we're watching it again. This is all funny. It's and so you must good. understand every joke, I will explain yes. it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I was totally obnoxious. Uh, and I went back and I signed up for classes at I.O. the okay. next week. Okay. And I, I, and then everything just sort of took, everything yeah. kind of like coalesced and it was mm -hmm. all right. I had all this great theater training background, mm -hmm. which gave me kind of a different 
perspective than some people who just like come straight into comedy. Mm -hmm. Not that that's less valid. It's just, it's, it's a cool like melting pot of people. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah, I just kind of like finally found my place. Yeah. And I got on a team. Uh, this is, I mean, this is like 2001 at this point. So this is ages ago and mm -hmm. Iowa's not nearly as big as it is now. I got on a team at a level four. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Which back then was not uncommon, mm -hmm. but not, it's just, it's just a different place now. Yeah. Like my 5D shows were Friday nights at 8 PM in the old upstairs space. We were like the okay. last team to like have a show on a Friday night at 8 wow. PM. Like no way you could do that now. Yeah. Um, it's just too big. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I got on a Herald team and I was, I just found these people that I loved and Arnie was on my first Herald mm -hmm. team with me. Uh, and he and I have been weirdly linked. We've done almost every improv project we've ever done together mm -hmm. by choice or by accident. Interesting. We either, we either get thrown into the same thing. Uh, Jason Chin picked us out both to be on World News tonight. Mm -hmm. Starting in 2003 and that just had its 12th anniversary. Uh-huh. I'm not a full-time cast member anymore, but I still play occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, I started improvised Shakespeare about would have been 2011. Did so you do a lot of Shakespeare in college? I did a little bit of Shakespeare in college. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't consider myself classically trained by mm -hmm. any stretch of the imagination. Um, uh, Blaine's, Blaine Swen's, um, Shakespeare rehearsals though were very grueling. Really? <laughs> in a great way. Like he's like great at like getting people up to speed and making everyone feel like they can do it. Uh-huh. Um, cause some of the people who do it like Ross Bryant and Joey Bland and Brendan Dowling are just amazing at the language. Yeah. Like they're so good at it that you just, sometimes I'm just watching. I'm like, Oh shit, I'm in the show. <laughs> cause I'm just like so into what they're yeah. doing. Um, so it, it, it can feel a little like intimidating at times, but then at other times it's like, Oh, this is the dumbest thing in the world. It's just five guys smacking each other's butts. You know, it's That's like at the same time, it's it's while it's so like grandiose, it's also at the same time very base. Yeah. And it's a it's that beautiful mix of it, and it's always playful and fun, mm -hmm. and everyone, everyone in it is so supportive. Like you, I, I, I almost, I can't say maybe never. I no, I, I'm gonna say never. I've never felt not taken care of in that show. That's great. I started to improvise Star Trek as a live show mm -hmm. about a year before I did. Uh, Shakespeare. Okay. So we had a live run at IO. It was like midnights on Saturdays. And okay. Griffin and Charlie, Griffin Eckstein and Charlie McCracken, who originally came up with the idea, were like, we want this dumb sci-fi midnight, mm -hmm. just fun show. Mm -hmm. And I guess they were batting around ideas for a long time. And like Griffin and Irene both did the Star Trek experience. They had worked at it out in Las Vegas, like the okay. live action, like you walk through kind mm -hmm. of a ride experience thing. And they were just like, you know, fans of, of sci-fi in general. And they were like, let's just do a Star Trek show. Why are we trying to come up with something else? Yeah. Let's just do a stupid thing, which, you know, is a double-edged sword. Some people are just not going to give that show a chance because they just don't, whatever they think Star Trek is, they don't like it. Yeah. Which is a shame because it's actually just a really good show on its own. Um, and I'm sure you get a lot of people too who are like, oh, well, I haven't really watched Star Trek, so I don't know, I'll get it. Yeah, but, yeah. exactly. And, and But the other the other side of that double-edged sword is there are people who have zero interest in improv, improv or comedy mm -hmm. who have come to that show once it became a podcast. Yeah. Because the podcast started a few months after we ended the first live run. Mm -hmm. Star Trek's been a podcast for about five years, Improvised mm -hmm. Star Trek. And I think we're sitting around 3,500 subscribers. Mm-hmm. And um, as of like three weeks ago, uh, Magic Tavern was at 7,000. And then That's amazing. Apple emailed us uh -huh. and said they wanted to feature us. And we were featured on the front page of uh -huh. iTunes. Well, the it's podcast section of iTunes. Uh -huh. So we're like up there with... Like Anna Winter and uh, Grace Helbig and people. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. So we were up there for about a week. And we're still on the front page in a smaller section now. Mm -hmm. uh, but as of last week, we were at 26,000 subscribers. Holy moly. My main focus is like making both of those podcasts mm -hmm. as good as they can be 
And I think in general, just sort of supporting the podcast community, Mm because I think there's just like this new sort of emerging thing Mm -hmm. that is super interesting and cool that's happening that we can tell stories in new ways. Yeah. You know, and I just, I I, I love that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And and I, as much as possible, I want to be, I guess, a champion for Chicago talent. I don't know how that transforms forms into a plan. I haven't written down the five-year thing. No, I like this mantle of of responsibility that you've done. It's great. Yeah, no, I, and I, and I always kind of feel that way. Like Mm -hmm. there's a certain way I approach, uh, coaching and directing too, Mm -hmm. which I've done uh, a fair amount in the city. Uh, I used to coach teams at IO a lot. I haven't Mm -hmm. done that in a few years. Uh, but I, I just kind of within the last year or so, not even last year, last few months, I sort of switched my model about thinking about it because people ask me to coach stuff and it's like, oh, I don't have time and yeah. it's stressful and I've got other shit I'm worried about. Mm-hmm. And uh, so and I do you really... like coach or teach somebody, you feel like personally responsible for their growth and like yeah. what they're doing and you get, become so invested. And I don't want to half-ass that. Yeah. So anything that I do now, people will email me and say like, how much does it cost to hire you as a coach? Mm-hmm. Like, what's your rate? Yeah. And now my thing is, you give me whatever you think it's worth. Oh, if wow. I if I really want to do this project, uh-huh. I'm not doing it for the money. Yeah. Because taking money for coaching fucks up the way I think about it. Yeah. And it just feels like a job then instead of like you're really helping the person. Or? Yeah. And yeah. and 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 that is n- not to take anything away from the coaches who like. There are people who I know who coach, and that's a part of their income, mm-hmm. and they need it. I have a full time job. Mm-hmm. I make money from commercials. I make money from doing biz co gigs at Second City. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I have enough to be. I, I'm not like I said. I'm not making it rain, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm fine. So if I do something like that, I want to do it because I want to do it. Yeah. And I want to teach because I want to teach. I love doing the mixer on mm-hmm. Monday nights at the playground that really? uh, uh, Brian Duff and Kevin Reader run. Mm-hmm. Because I show up for a half hour. I teach all these people who are maybe it's the first time they're ever improvising yeah ever mm-hmm. and it's like a big uh long form open mic jam thing mm-hmm. so i teach from 10 to 10 30 and then at 10 30 everybody just gets split into teams and like essentially the whole audience mm-hmm. becomes different improv teams yeah we did it for um improvised jam oh they got you did it the other week that's yeah. so fun it's it such a, a fun, fun experience mm-hmm. because i started when i started mm-hmm. and like i said a much smaller community at that time much easier for me to get on a team and have the kind of great mm-hmm. experiences I've had. I have been so lucky. A huge element of this is just pure luck. That I met the right people at the right time. I happened to be in the right places at the right time. That have allowed me to have this sort of like very like, well, let go of all these negative things. Like, that's hard for people. Well, you would say you're, you're very lucky, but I mean, I think there is that was it Thomas Jefferson definition of, of luck that it's where opportunity meets preparation? Yes. And I mean, you, like you put in the work, you definitely put in the work. So yeah. like, I wouldn't undersell yourself as just being lucky. Uh, I, I don't, yeah. And I don't see it as underselling myself mm-hmm. as much as like reminding myself to be grateful. Gotcha. And mm-hmm. hopefully, and another way of maybe helping people, if like, if you're listening to this because like you want to learn about improv or you're watching it because like, you've heard me on podcasts and you want to understand like how we do what we do. Mm-hmm. I, I can't emphasize enough being grateful for wherever you're at and whoever you're playing with. Whenever I'm coaching somebody and I, I've repeated this over and over and over again. So if you've ever watched me on anything else, I've said this already. If you hate what you're doing, if you hate the people you're doing it with, mm-hmm. you are at least 50% of the problem. Mm-hmm. Because you can make the choice to not hate it. Yeah. Even if that other person is terrible, like they don't get it. I understand those people exist. Mm -hmm. If they are the worst and they're horrible in all sorts of ways that I don't even want to get into. Yeah. You can always make the choice of like, I'm going to make that person look good. I'm going to give them a gift anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the positive part of this. You can give yourself that gift. It's like the beginning of this domino effect for me of like realizing that was possible. Yeah. You know, of like not being so frustrated with things and not being angry when a show didn't go the way yeah. I wanted. And like all those things are so natural, you know, mm-hmm. for them to happen. Like 
especially when you're first figuring it out. And it's like, it's so frustrating because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you're like, why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. And so much of the time when it doesn't work, it's because you decided in one like little micro fraction of a moment mm -hmm. that it wasn't going to work. Yeah. And then self fulfilling. Everything yeah. dissolves after that. Instead of just going, it's all going to be fine. Mm -hmm. And I can, and even if something quote unquote goes wrong, mm -hmm. which it never really does, we can use everything. It's so funny because I watched Bridges of Spies last night. Okay. Uh, or Bridges of Spies, sorry. And there's this one, uh, the Russian spy character in mm -hmm. there, you know, Tom Hanks' character keeps asking him, he's like, aren't you worried? And every time this guy replies, would it help? <laughs> <laughs> and like I keep thinking back to that. Yeah. It's it's so true. Google Bill Arnett an improv uh chart. It's out there on the internet somewhere. I, I know it is. But he made a chart mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's the kind of guy he is. Uh-huh. Of how good you think you are uh -huh. versus how good you really are. Yeah. And how you kind of like always don't trust yourself, but even when you're like you once you have enough experience even your worst show uh -huh. is better than your shows used to be when you first started. But you have no idea. But you still you think still, it's the worst. Yeah. Uh, and exactly. it's brilliant. It's this brilliant thing that kind of puts it all in perspective and makes you go, oh, yeah, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. I've been pontificating a lot about improv comedy, but that's I what I do. I, I, I get very passionate about it. And, um, yeah. Usually the super last part of this is plugs. I feel like we've been plugging everything I've this whole time. Everything. Yeah. So you can see the Improvised Shakespeare Company at IO Theater on Thursdays at eight, Fridays at eight and ten thirty, and Saturdays at eight. Uh, Improvised Star Trek is about to start a new live run, which will be Fridays at ten thirty, starting November sixth through December eighteenth. And Improvised Jane Austen will be opening for us one of those weekends. Yay! Uh, you can also go to your favorite uh, podcast app to find Improvised Star Trek the podcast. We have over 130 episodes now. And you can also look up Hello from the Magic Tavern, uh, which has about 32 episodes now. Uh, it's been going about half a year. So it's easy to go to back to the beginning and get caught up with that one. Because like mm -hmm. I said, they're all real short. Uh, and I think that is it for the moment. What about like personal, do you have a webpage or Twitter? Oh, you can always go to uh, at Usador the Blue to find my uh, uh, my character <laughs> Twitter or uh, my personal Twitter at More People Happy, uh, which uh, I have that Twitter handle because More happy. I, got, I got hacked by some Korean at some point <laughs> and they changed my handle to at More People Happy. What? And then I, I like re, I like changed the password and logged back into it because I let it sit dormant That's for like so two years. Weird. And I was like, okay. at more people happy is such a great is, handle. I'm never really gonna great. change it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, awesome. at more people happy uh, on Facebook. Uh, my my website is either at is either actor Matt Young or Matt Young actor. I can never remember which. We'll figure it out. I'll put a little link in the things, the information, the details. Yeah. Um, yeah, great. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. New episodes every Wednesday. We have a lot of fun here. Tell your friends. Tell your bosses. Tell your cats. Make your cats subscribe. All right. Leave a comment down below if you're on the YouTube. Tweet at me as we covered earlier if you're uh, anytime. Uh, you can tweet basically morning, day, or night on that service. There's no real limitation <laughs> They on that. don't have closed hours. No. Which is insane to me. Yeah. You need to take some time to rest, Twitter, all right? Some t someday Twitter will open a brick and mortar and they'll only be open from 9 to 5. That will be the day when people conduct their business between 9 and 5. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. And thank you so no. much for being on this. Thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, this thank was you. great. This was great. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye.